might think about doing this video for a little minute. Like it's going on like maybe what, two years now. I finally got the courage to say, you know what? I'm gonna let it go and just do what I gotta do. Cause you know what? I'm on this journey, me journey. So, hi, my name is Tiffany and I have found myself asking the very question that a lot of people have asked me surprisingly but I did not pay attention to it and the question is what are you going to do this is relating to the fact that I am a parent of two grown kids now and I have been so devoted to my kids I have been involved in everything and I pretty much put them before me in every way possible um so I just felt like as a mother it was my duty to make sure that their needs and their wants came before mine which I know I'm gonna have a lot of people saying oh no 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 but each is to their own and we all parent in a different way um and we all know what's work what works best for us um unfortunately my kids fathers were not in their life so I knew as a child how it felt I grew up with two parents in the home until I was 12 um, and even after separation my dad was still very involved in my life until you know the day he passed away we had a relationship so that was not the case the case was I know how I felt as a child to have parents involved okay they both were different my dad was to me he was a provider and everything, but he was more strictly about education when showing his support. Um, we laughed, we joked about other things or whatever, but when it came to cheerleading and um, Girl Scouts and um, just different extracurricular activities, no, he just was not yet. Yeah, the, the dad, no, he was not like that. Um, my mom, on the other hand, she was about education. She always instilled, you know, do your very best. If that's your very best, I'm proud of you, blah, blah, blah. But she was the involved parent. She was the one to go on field trips. She was the one to attend chili the competitions and girl style meetings and, you know, just just everything that, that I was involved in. It didn't matter from gymnastics to uh, ballet, to whatever, all the stuff that I didn't been involved in. She was the number one cheerleader. I can say, am I sorry? Yes, mother, that I did not uh, complete all of those things and stay focused, band, chili. That was probably the two that I was consistent with, chili and band. But all the other stuff, thinking about all the money they wasted on different things, still, she was there for me. So I knew firsthand how that felt. Um, I've also had the, the opportunity to have friends or have associates or whatever to see them you know and have heard them express like you know what my child have to understand and you know their job came first and that and and fine that's 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 what works for them that didn't work for me that didn't work for me um being so involved in my son because my daughter she was active in school to a certain extent um you know she did volleyball she did chili and everything and i was there for all of those things but once she got older into high school she wasn't as active she was strictly just about her academics so it wasn't the need of me being at all the different events because there were, weren't any events um my son on the other hand got involved in band at an early age second third grade and all the way through high school um which when he got to high school where the high school he went to at the time started at sixth grade so he was there from sixth grade through 12th and he was in the band the whole entire time. So that was seven years of the band. And this particular band was very active. I mean, traveling every year. Um, when it's football season, they were performing every weekend. And from the practices, the practices, he go to school. He had to be to school like seven something in the morning. So he's at school from seven in the morning to then at seven, 7.30 at night. That's how long practices end. Um, so pretty much the only day of the week that my son really had off was a Sunday. And that was, um, only if they didn't have a performance and that was only if it wasn't parade season because they marched, of course, on a Sunday during parade season. So I just knew 
I had to be there. And also he shared, we shared a bind with the very thing for his band. I was in band, I played snare drum, he was in band, he played bass drum on to tenor drum. Um, so that was something me and him binded over. And I just enjoyed every minute of it and I wanted to let him know I'm there, no matter what. I'm there, I will always be there. That's all I ever wanted my kids to know. So it took a very big chunk of my life because again, like I said, I was a single parent. Yes, I had my mother, again, my number one cheerleader, which was also my biggest supporter. So it helped me, you know, with my kids, but it was, it was a lot. It was a lot and I chose that, but I never wanted them to see it was a lot for me. So I put that first. Um, anywhere from making sure during the time they were in you know younger ages I worked jobs to where I can bring them to school and pick them up I didn't want that burden I didn't want them on van service I didn't I didn't want those things and I think a lot of it come from the things I dealt with um, I rode the van when I was younger because my mom didn't drive um, that was a safe way to get me to and from school and I appreciate it nothing happened to me on the van service but when I got older to go into high school and catching the bus, the public transportation. Um, going to a Catholic school, all girls school, I was attacked. Um, and that was the thing, you know, the, they didn't like our school. So you went through, you went through hell. And knowing what I went through, I never wanted my kids to go through that. So again, I think it was more of a protection thing. So I made sure I bought them to school and from school because my son, my daughter ended up going to the same high school I went to and my son ended up going to the, the brother's school, the old boy school. And I know what those boys used to go through when I was in high school. So I was like, nah. And now today's world, I mean, all well, the crazy stuff is just too much going on. And I wasn't ready for him to drive yet. Um, again, single parent is one car. So, you know, it is what it is. But I always had a lot of people asking, you know, what you gonna do when they leave Tiffany? What you gonna do when they go off to college? What you gonna do, Tiffany? What you gonna do, what you gonna do, what you gonna do? And I was the main one like, girl, I'm gonna be all right. I'm gonna do me and this and that. Shh, baby. It feels like an emptiness. I mean, he didn't go away to college. He's still in the city. But the fact that I don't have to do what I was doing for him before, it is it's like reality now. You know, reality has literally came and psh, smacked me in my face. Like, girl, wake up. This, this is your life now. It's no more you got to go do this. It's no more you got to go pick him up. It's, it's no more of that. It's just you. Now, what are you going to do? And as simple as it may be to others, it is hard for me because in the way that's you know that was my life my life was my kids um I have lost relationships I have lost friendships I, I I have and I'm being honest I mean if a man could understand that my kids come first and that I had to be at events or whatever then that just wasn't a relationship for me you know it's all in timing that that just wasn't the time for me I felt to be in a relationship because my kids are going to come first. And, and that was just that. Um, you know, now that towards the middle of my son's high school years, I decided to, because it, it got, it got a little hectic with the jobs, you know, you know, jobs don't want you to take off and this and that. And, and I grant it, I understand, but I'm not letting my 12 year old, 13 year old travel to different cities. And like I said, his dad is not in his life um, by himself on a band trip. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. I, 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 I've grown to love and respect a lot of the band teachers at the time that were there, um, parents and stuff. But it's nothing like you being there for your child, period. I don't care what nobody said. So, and it just, it's just more to... Uh, a support thing you know of course he he want to go on a trip he want but 
he looking at other boys with their dads or other boys with their moms. Like, he want his support. And I wasn't going to never let my son feel that. So, of course, we did this as a family trip. Me, my mom, my daughter, psh, we going every time they go. We doing this as a family trip. So, we are a very close-knit family. And I get that. It's just now, like I said, what now, Tiffany? <laughs> um, and it's a little harder for me because I did have, I started with, because it's a big age difference with my kids. Um, my son is 19 and my daughter is 27. Please don't let me get this wrong. 27. Um, she will be 28 this year. Yes, people want to do the math. I had her at a young age. By that happening, I pretty much started out being a parent early. So in a way, I grew up with my daughter. Um, so for a huge part of my life, I've always had to put someone else first. To me, I never really had the time to focus on me. And that's no one's fault but my own. I, I know the choices I made. That's what I did. But that is my life. And that's why people could not understand me. I just never wanted my kids to feel I wasn't going to be that for them. So, I also, now we've had this discussion with them, you know, as a family. And, you know, now they want me to do things for me. But it's like, it's easy to say, like I said, it's easier to say it than done. Because, honestly, I just still feel sometimes guilty. Like, you know, I don't know because even though they're grown, they're still my babies. And it's hard. I just don't know how to let it go. And I just was sitting here, for, like I said, for like a year now. My son is his second year of college. Um, just wondering, like, how many other moms probably actually went through this? Like, you know, how did they get through this? Like, what did they do? I'm not talking about the parents, you know who were very involved with their kids and now the kids are going off to college. They have a husband, so it's now it's time for them, her and her husband to be together. I'm talking about those single moms, like now that house is empty and it's just you. Like, what do you do now? You know, yeah, we know you could go to work, you could do all that kind of stuff and that's fine, but as far as what used to fill you emotionally, it's now gone. You know, I have my business. I can make cakes all day long. But what used to give me my joy, my excitement, was my kids. To see the smile on their face when they see mommy showed up for something. When mommy came and volunteered at the school. When mommy was a part of Band Booster. When mommy was doing this with the Cookie Mom for Girl Scout and stuff. When they were excited to have mommy involved like that, that's what brought me joy. And now that is gone. So it I know it's it's like I said, it's just it's it's hard for me now to sit here and say to fully focus on me. I kind of feel like like I said, guilty. Like, no, I'm not used to just focusing on me. I'm not used to putting me first. So, you know, I know everything happens for a reason. Again, timing, 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 timing. Um that man upstairs knew I wasn't going to devote my time and effort to a relationship like I was supposed to. He knew I wasn't going to put my time and effort into my business like I should have been doing. He knew that. He knew it. You know, even though I say, yeah, I could do this and I could do that, you know, I'm super mom. I'm, you know, Tiffany, I could make it happen. Even though I felt that and thought that in my mind. The only thing I knew wholeheartedly that I was going to really put my heart into was those two kids. And now I have no more excuses. No more. And I have to sit down and think about the things I have asked the man of stats for. You know, that's a whole nother video about, you know, with me being sick and pretty much on my dying bed and asking and pleading praying spare my life so i can see my kids grow up graduate from high school graduate from college my daughter have done that i thank the lord i was here to see her graduate high school college and then go on to get her master's degree and graduate 
I am forever grateful. And now my son, I have seen him graduate from school, high school, and now he's in college. And I'm, I'm still here. I still feel healthy, have my strength, have my life. I'm doing good. I cannot let all of that just go undone just by not doing anything and showing the man above that I'm grateful for still being here. So I want to take this time and I want to focus on me. I want to get myself in the best shape that I can be in physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And I want to start this journey and I want to invite everyone along the way who may share my story, may share the things I've gone through. You know, we as a community need to learn to help one another. Um, it's, it's, it's sad but very true that, you know, black community, we don't, we don't talk about therapy too much. Um, we don't talk about mental state, you know, because we are always known to be the strong one. You know, you don't let people into your life. You don't do this, you don't do that. And sometimes, sometimes, your very story can help someone else. So that's why I'm asking. You know, I've been trying to search and search, and I know they're out there. I just probably haven't found them. But I want to see other mother stories, other single mothers who have gone through this. Like, it doesn't matter the skin, you know, race or whatever. I want to know because I need those people to help me. The same way I wish that my journey that I'm getting ready to start will help someone else. You know, God put us through a test in order for us to give a testimony. You know, I want to be able to give a testimony about all the things I have gone through from the day I became a parent 27 years ago until now to see there is still life. I still have life to live. You know, I have to give my testimony and say, you know what, I went through that test. I went through the test of you know, one minute thinking I'm everything is going right for me. The next minute, I don't even know if I was going to live the next day. But I'm still here. And I want to see what life has in store for Tiffany. Not Tiffany kids, but Tiffany. And I think I'm ready to start this journey. I don't think I know I'm ready to start this journey. And I know that God put me to start this journey at this time where my focus won't be on nobody else but me. So if there are other women out there that's going through this or have gone through this, I encourage you all to please share your story with me. You know, give me encouraging words to get through this because yes, I know it's going to be hard. I can admit to that. It's going to be hard for me to focus solely on me because I've always focused on my kids. You know, but at the same time, I want this to be. I know it's going to get serious along the way, you know, but I want it to be fun. I want to enjoy this journey because it's my journey. You know, I want to be able to, like I said, I put the smiles on their face. I want to be able to do that matching and put the smile on my face. So thank you guys for taking the time to listen to me. And I hope that you will follow along on this journey with me by subscribing to this station, um, this channel. I mean, I'm sorry, this channel. And you know, hit that like button, that like button, and share my story if you can, or simply send your prayers, send encouraging words. I accept all of that. The only thing I ask is do not come with the negative stuff. You know, we have enough of that going on in the world. Like, give me some encouraging words. Like, build me up, help build me up. You know, that's what I need right now. So until next time, be looking out. I will be sharing. Yes. The truth in the ugly, meaning that this weight journey, because I have to put it out there for is yes, how what my starting weight, what I need to target on and everything. I'm being I, I'm being open with everything. So I'm looking forward to it. And I hope you guys are as well. So until next time, thank you, and I'll see you guys later.